good morning students today we are going to continue uh, the remaining portion of pathology and uh, we are starting with a new section that is learning what is learning we all hearing this term learning in all our everyday life what is actually learning means uh, in what way we can give a definition for this learning yes according to thorps there is a definition it is the process which manifest manifest means prakatam avva the process which manifests itself by adaptive changes in individual behavior as a result of experience what do you understand from this there is uh, because of experience some adaptive that is favorable cha cha changes is happening in individuals behavior that type of adaptive changes that entire process is called learning because uh, whatever we are gaining as a new piece of information as a result of our experience that gives some adaptive value so learning results in some adaptive change that is learning so once more i am telling the definition learning is the process which manifests itself by adaptive changes in individuals behavior as a result of experience because uh, for example uh, in your uh, classroom times whenever you are coming to the class without learning the uh, former classes topic if you are ask question by the teacher and you need to stand up or uh, you need to take a position then regularly if it goes on then you learn that you have to learn the uh, topics regularly to avoid getting the imposition that also uh, is an example for learning is an adaptive change that do good for that individual for a uh, okay that, that much learning then we are going to see types of learning <laughs> this area is very 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 important very important area so surely uh, some more another hud is usually coming as question for your university exam don't omit this area okay types of learning we are moving to different types first one is habituation habituation listen to that term habituation becoming habit what is the nature of this type of learning it is the simplest it is the simplest type of learning and uh, it, in this learning we are not gaining any new response we are not acquiring any new response but actually we are losing the old response important what we are what change is happening here uh, we are not acquiring any new response instead we are losing all response and uh, in this type of learning that individual not need to respond to a stimulus that is what it mean totally there is a reduction in responsiveness and stay as harmless so and also this learning this type of learning has some adaptive significance it gives some adaptation with the circumstances for responding to something we need to spend some energy as part of this habituation type learning as we don't need to respond we can conserve energy also in this type of learning uh example suppose you think that 
one of your friend's house is very near to a railway station and uh, because of some reason once you need to go and stay along with uh, him for some days in the first two days it become very difficult for you to sleep in the night because of the loud noise of the train that passes by but as the days goes by then it become a habit of you you can you can manage to sleep even in the high loud sound of train after a few days of staying there when you return to your own home then it will uh, then become difficult for you to uh, sleep without hearing that loud noise <laughs> this what you are losing your rens responsiveness to a particular situation losing the response that is habituation i think it's very clear to you next we are going to condition the reflex condition the reflex means what uh response to one stimulus is associated with other stimulus this condition reflex also so many times have came for the year examination a very important condition reflex what is condition reflex it's a time of type of response to one stimulus and that stimulus is associated with the other stimulus who discovered ivan v pavlov um you have already have been uh, learned this uh, saying condition re reflex from your lower classes i think even in your plus 2 classes i hope you have learned this one anyway we are going to see that what is that experiment experiment uh, its picture is given here first uh, this is the condition uh, this before um before we are conditioning a stimulus what is the what is happening there it's a normal natural uh, response whenever a dog a starved dog happen to see his food he start to produce saliva that is quite natural nothing unnatural here so the food is unconditioned stimulus and that salivation that response is unconditioned response then we are going to see the uh, importance what is the role of another artificial stimulus here before condition before conditioning what is its role what role it is play that uh, additional introducing stimulus is the sound of a bell here you are simply making noise using a bell in front of the dog dog didn't show any response he simply looks at the bell no salivation so here uh, since the ringing sound of the bell didn't elicit any response is in this dog then we can call that stimulus as neutral and no conditioned response happen here there is no response is happening then coming to next situation we are uh, start to condition this neutral stimulus how uh, along with ringing the bell we sub we add or supplement uh, the food the favorite food of this dog so with the ringing of the bell you, we are offering food for the dog then as it continues for so many days regularly without any gap then that dog learned that whenever he heard the sound of the bell he think that uh, he, he is going to have his food and he start to salivate then after few days that stimulus become condition get condition then without food itself 
the ringing sound of the bell bell ringing sound of the bell can elicit salivation in dog at that point of time we can call that stimulus is condition and the response is a conditioned response clear okay um there are four laws in this experiment which are the four laws in that uh, uh, condition reflex uh, condition the reflex experiment law of continuity whatever stimulus we need to we are intended to condition we need to give that uh, stimulus and its associated natural stimulus continuously because a uh, ringing sound of the bell and uh, food uh, both of them we need to uh, give to the food continuously for many days then only the dog learn that uh, whenever the ringing sound of the bell is coming uh, he understand that his food also coming that that, that training should be that uh, experience should be continuous law of repetition law of repetition means whatever we are intended to condition whatever stimulus we are intended to condition we need to repeat it several times when um, still it it become uh, till it have some uh, conditioned response here also we have seen that uh, after so many repetition then only the dog learned that um, with the ringing sound of the bell food is going to come so so many repetition is necessary then law of reinforcement law of reinforcement means uh, for conditioning a stimulus we need to give some reward so that reward will strengthen strengthen the association of one stimulus with another law of interference law of interference means if a new experience uh, um, can how previous uh, sorry uh, law of inter interference means we are giving that ringing sound of the bell and associated with we are giving food for the dog and in between that two stimulus don't let any other thing to interfere the attention of the dog if anything can to interfere the attention then it will be difficult for the dog to associate between these two stimulus that is law of interference next step trial and error learning instrumental conditioning uh, it is uh, the type of learning through trial and error and this type of learning is uh, done by skinner using rats what is that x experiment that i will explain to you what is that experiment experiment means uh, he had a box box is there that box is called a skinner box and inside he put a rat a starved a rat and uh, also there is uh, uh, a facility there uh, a window is there a window or a window or uh, not window a slot is there and associated with there is a lever and he closed the box then because of star because of appetite this uh, mice or the, uh, this rat ran here and there inside this box and accidentally touches this lever on the very touching of the lever he will rewarded a pellet of food somehow uh, he got food yeah, but he didn't understand that for getting food he need to uh, touch the lever again he is um, continue roam, roam, roaming inside the uh, box and against accidentally 
touches the liver and he rewarded another well. And it, it continued for um, several times. Then the rat learned that for getting the pellet, he need to touch the liver. After learning that, whenever he feel ap appetite, just go and press the liver to get the food. That is a trial and error type of learning. Thing is clear. Then latent learning. Latent learning. What is latent learning? Uh, in this, uh, so many indifferent stimulus are there. So many indifferent stimulus are there. And uh, we, we means an individual learns to perform in response to that indifferent stimulus. And at the time he learns something, he is not rewarded. Or punished. Even then he is learning something. With respect to some indifferent stimulus. So if we can call this type of learning as associative learning. And uh, this uh, latent learning always remain latent. Because it will remain hidden in our memory. And in some other situation only, it turns useful. For example, um, after having a uh, di stomach full diet, we happen to see, we means anybody, anybody happen to see a jar full of very sweet, delicious ladoo. And that time, as our stomach was fully distended, we didn't got any interest to have that uh, at that time. But we learned that uh, in that jar, ladoo, sweet, delicious ladoos are there. And after some time, after two or three, four, three or four hours, again we feel appetite. And that time we remember, oh, there. At that room, in that corner, in that shelf, that inside the jar, some delicious ladoos are there. Then we are going and having it. That's an example for latent learning. At the time of learning, we are not taking the reward or we are not getting, uh, getting any punishment. But only later, because of some different stimulus, we are uh, learning to perform something. That is latent learning. Then insight learning, insight, insight learning. At the moment we are learning something. What is the peculiarity? It is the highest form of learning. And uh, um, because of this type of learning, we earn the ability to solve complex problems. For this type of learning, we need high understanding, analytical thinking, reasoning, uh, then good retention in the memory, everything we need for that. And also that individual need to solve the problem, whatever problem we are, he, is, he or she is facing very fast. There is no enough time for having any trial and error. For example, um, if a mother happened to see that uh, her baby is going to fall down from uh, from uh, from the top of some uh, table or anything like that, at the moment itself she is acting. There is no uh, chance to think what I have to do, um, in what way I, I, I need to go and to save my baby. There is no time for that. Uh, the moment uh, that person is solving that problem, that is insight learning. So, for proving this insight learning, and there is an experiment, I will show you that. A chimpanzee is kept in a room and uh, into that room, uh, a bunch of banana is hand. It is uh, too much height from the chimpanzee. At the moment itself, a chimpanzee um, understand how to manage that by putting some box together 
and and also by taking a iron road uh, over that he, uh, he he able to get that uh, bunch of banana is a insect experiment that is performed to prove the insect learning that experiment was done by kofler kofler in 1912 and next type of learning i will show you next type of learning is imprinting what is imprinting imprinting means it is happening this type of learning is happening in early life of birds usually birds and animals soon after their birth uh, this type of learning is uh, studied by lawrence um had he learned this type of learning uh, by by uh, taking the case how young ones are attached to its mothers by taking the that, that case he learned the imprinting type of learning what is the peculiarity of this type of learning it is irreversible we can't reverse because if i am uh, duckling uh, feel or understand that uh, duck uh, duck or some other thing uh, is its mother then we can't change their uh, that uh, learning it is not uh, it is not reversible so it is very irreversible and also another important point is that uh, it is restricted only for to a brief sensitive period so and the peculiarity and here is a major stimulus and second stimulus is there major stimulus uh, that help for this type of learning is visual because whenever that that things happen to see uh, who else in front of it uh, just after the moment it hatch out from the egg uh, then uh, it consider that being as its mother so visual then second stimulus is auditory second uh, they consider uh the uh, second thing they consider as a second uh, stimulus is auditory sound hand responsiveness and that response that learning declines after that sensitive period next uh, neural mechanism of learning learning is correlated to what the correlated to development of central nervous system what is central nervous system central nervous system means central nervous system means brain and spine spinal cord brain plus spinal cord is central nervous system and um, learning means some changes are happening to central nervous system then what is memory memory means preservation of that change happen to central nervous system so learning is correlated to development of central nervous system and the learning itself means uh, some changes that is happen to central nervous system and what is memory memory is the preservation of that change that happen to central nervous system A location of learning in brain according to pavlov uh, it is cerebral cortex cortex means this area is very very essentially essential and we are going to see lastly's experiment uh, one that is there and uh, its visual parts means those parts that is concerned with uh, regulating the vision that part in the cortex is removed for this mice then it is giving some visual learning it is trained it is trained to discriminate sorry discriminate between black and a white dot after removing the visual parts of the cortex but the rat even if he learned to discriminate between Uh, black and white door it cannot discriminate between different shapes that means um, some ability has affect that is it me okay that is lashley's experiment and uh, it means that uh, capacity 
to form a detailed vision that has lost. But in discriminating the brightness, in discriminating the brightness, it has exceed a little bit more. That means learning ability unimpaired, but memory is affected there. Learning is uh, going on, but memory, memory, it is more affected. That is last day's experiment. Next, uh, ah, and also some findings he made out of his experiment. Which are the findings? <coughs> that lesion, lesion means uh, the removal of a part from the brain. <coughs> that uh, removed part size, if it is very big, then the effect also will be big. And uh, it is not a matter that where we make that lesion. That means all parts of the cortex is equal in uh, helping learning and memory. That is the findings of Lashley. Then we are um, going to see another situation that is maze learning. Maze learning means, maze means uh, because uh, in your uh, younger ages you always you uh, do some uh, games in Baladama. And as uh, such type of uh, small bag, a uh, small uh, that uh, week, uh, weekly uh, weekly items are there. Uh, in that, uh, there are some puzzles. They are asking to find the way to go to somewhere. There is an example for this maze. I show the way uh, for this tiger to its uh, cave like that so many puzzles are there. So, it's a type of maze. And uh, uh, one rat is led to move through a maze. What it uh, is uh, doing? Before making any alteration by using many stimulus like vision, sound, touch, everything he understand and find the way. But uh, if uh, any part of the sense organ is removed, then that ability, ability to understand its way by the rat become affected. And uh, that effect is not depend on, is not depend on where that, where that removal is happen. That means totally the cortex, cerebral cortex is important. All parts are equal, potential and important. Then temporal lobe, what is the importance? Temporal lobe is uh, somewhat here below the cortex. Uh, it is located beneath the lateral fissure. <laughs> beneath the lateral fissure. Um, and uh, this temporal, uh, temporal where is this location I al already told you. Um, what is its importance? The, its importance role in touch discrimination. What is the importance for temporal law? It helps in touch discrimination. And also visual discrimination. Touch discrimination is there and uh, Visual discrimination for this temporal lobe uh, um, uh, playing a important uh, part. This is uh, regarding temporal lobe. Then what is the final conclusion? Before that, uh, one more thing is that um, epileptic, in the case of epileptic person, epileptic means abasmara. <coughs> in the case of epileptic person, if uh, we give electric shock to the temporal lobe, then that person start to uh, have his past memories, like a uh, dramatic dream. Mm -hmm. uh, they are showing the role of temporal lobe once more. Final conclusion is the final conclusion. If lesions are done in amygdala, amygdala is this portion. What is amygdala? Uh, amygdala is located somewhere here. 
um, and uh, if it is happened in hippocampus hippocampus is this portion this red part uh, it will more it will cause more effect on learning that is the final conclusion if those lesions are happened in amygdala or hippocampus it will affect learning more learning actually occurs in many places of the brain and it's very difficult to say which part is essential so amygdala and hippocampus is somewhat more important uh, amygdala is a uh, alban shaped uh, group of nuclei that is located deep within the median temporal lobe and hippocampus uh, is this one this curved structure in the median temporal lobe okay then we are going to see the neural mechanism in behavior neural mechanism in behavior what is the significance of cerebrum again cerebrum it is the seat of consciousness learning memory etc okay now then hypothalamus what is the role of hypothalamus hypothalamus it control motivation the hypothalamus is seen below the thalamus okay then uh, this hypothalamus is intimately connected with the pituitary we know that so it can to certain extent regulate the internal environment to maintain the body homeo stasis that is another importance of hypothalamus then we are going to see another instance of uh, role of hypothalamus with respect to thirst is a person is having a diet rich in salt after having a diet rich in salt what is happening uh, in his body fluid osmotic concentration uh, become more it rises osmotic concentration rise in his body fluid that means he need to dilute the extracellular fluid of its osmotic concentration so need to take more water then at that uh, situation hypothalamus secrete uh, adh hormone this adh hormone results or prompt the nephrons and improve its permeability to water and uh, the collecting duct of neurons reabsorb more and more water and that way tries to dilute the body fluids it's one way and along with that the hypothalamus give or prompt that person to go and have more water or it uh, will say thirst in that person and that is the relation between hypothalamus and the thirst and uh, vice versa vice versa means uh, when uh, the condition that body fluids osmotic concentration is low in that situation a reverse of everything will happen permeability decrease more urine will pass out and there is no thirst then hypothalamus and feeding behavior and we are going to see next which part control feeding behavior which part it is the ventromedian part area or part or area of the hypothalamus hypothalamus ventromedian ventromedian means um suppose this is the hypothalamus it's a ventral sides middle portion um, that controls the feeding behavior example is using a rat 
if ventromedial part is removed, what will happen? Endromedial part actually controls the feeding behavior. If it is removed, then that's rats start to eat uh, uh, more, start to overeat. And uh, instead of removing that part, if we are uh, stimulate that part uh, very much, what will happen? Uh, it stop feeding. That rat stop feeding because that itself mean that this ventromedial area of hypothalamus when it gets stimulated what its role in it from that person to stop this feeding that's the role so if that ventromedial part is not there or it's or if it is not function properly then there is nobody there is no control unit to for it, eating that's why that rat whose uh, ventromedial part is removed uh, is eating more. So, because of its role in feeding behavior, this ventromedian part of hypothalamus is called a satation center. Satation, I will show the spelling. Satation means satisfaction center. Okay. Then uh, lateral hypothalamus, what is the important? Lateral hypothalamus, uh, what is the importance of that? It is stimul if it is stimulated, then that will increase its rate of feeding. Lateral side. Ventral side, stop feed. Lateral side, increase feed. Then what are the other, uh, other regulatory functions of hypothalamus? What are the functions hypothalamus is regulating? Like a sexual behavior, emotional behavior, um, then maternal behavior, all are examples. Then next, role of brain centers in brain centers in motivational behavior. Cerebral cortex. It govern emotional behavior. Cerebral cortex govern the emotional behavior. Neocortex. What's the role of neocortex? Neocortex is this area. Neocortex controls the aggressive behavior. If anything happened to this neocortex region, then that person lost the ability to get aggressive or to get angry. So, it will become um, unresponsive. Then we are going to see the limbic system and behavior. Limbic system. Then before that, we need to understand what is limbic lobe. Limbic lobe means what? Limbic lobe means... Um, in the medial surface of the cortex, it's under surface, there's several nuclei of gray matter. That gray matter is called limbic law. Then, then the role of limbic system control. What are the role it's playing? It controls the emotional behavior, then motivational drive, and also to distinguish between agreeable and disagreeable, parental care. Uh, then memory, use of language, reading, writing, all these actions are regulated by the limbic system. Neopallium or neocortex, I have shown its position and that area is the mother of invention and father of abstractive thought. Abstractive means uh, a, uh, it's gaining an overall idea about something. Churuka, that is abstractive thought. So, it's a, a site for abstractive thought and also uh, inventing, to invent something. The, all those actions are uh, seated there in Neopalia. Then, which are the main areas of limbic system? Main areas are amygdala, hippo, so many areas are there. Hippocampus, hippocampal gyrus, thalamus, hypothalamus, phonix, Amillary body, cingulate gyrus and prefrontal area. I will show all those areas. This picture we can see amygdala I already shown you. 
then hippocampus is here hippocampus hippocampal gyrus uh, is not shown here uh, then thalamus is there thalamus hypothalamus also there uh, then fornix fornix uh, is not shown in this picture fornix then mammillary body mammillary body also here uh, prefrontal area prefrontal area i will show you later all these area are equally important in controlling the emotions controlling the emotions it's about the main areas of limbic system then we are going to see separately what is the role of amygdala amygdala if amygdala uh, before that uh, amygdala is the center that controls friendship love and affection uh, then expression of mood then fear um then to detect dangerous situation if a person have uh, have anything happen uh, anything to the amygdala region then he can't understand uh, the dangerous of a particular situation so if amygdala is destroyed then it will result a syndrome it is called clover busy syndrome clover busy syndrome uh, if that syndrome happened that person lose fear and uh, his aggressiveness have reduced um, because he become more uh, his tameness has uh, will increase then dietary changes also uh, happen tameness means uh, um, courtshipness means inaka this the importance of amygdala then role of uh, hippocampus hippocampus means it, it is important for long term memory memory long for long term memory hippocampus is very important then role of hypothalamus what is the role it regulates motivational behavior thermal temperature of the body thermal regulation sexuality uh, hunger thirst uh, so many other then what is the role of uh, cingulate gyrus cingulate gyrus it uh, controls emotional reaction to pain and also it regulates the aggressive behavior what is the role of prefrontal area prefrontal area is uh, this area prefrontal area it is uh, larger in man what is its role it controls social responsibility uh, I, I should do this one i don't uh, i don't do this one that's a type of discrimination for all those things which is important this prefrontal area um, consciousness then cognitive function cognitive means intellectual function speech uh, all these uh, functions are controlled by this prefrontal area okay with this we can finish today's class and section thank you